Hello everyone at United United Fish Football. This is my opinion on the Manchester United game versus Celtic 20. Disclaimer at the game of the second half. But the first half was good. We played very well. It's just Kimbin, Hull, Rashford, everybody was on fire. Then it looks like the pattern of rebasing chances is still happening there. We need to have fire in our bellies in the front. We need to be ruthless. We keep spoiling chances of the chances. And I think that's what is, 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 is taking us back. Compared to last season, compared to last two seasons, we are playing very well. Our possession, all the stats. We are dominating the games. We are the team at the top. What is left is the final thing. And I want to be positive because I believe that when the goals come, it builds our confidence. Confidence is everything. And you know, as much as football is tactical, technical, and all, there's a very huge aspect of it, which is mental. And I believe that when we keep on rising, scoring game by game, our confidence will be built. That mentality as a full team will be built and we will get better. Thank you. Well, it was a disappointing end to the game because we went into this with so much optimism. I believe the schoolboy errors should be at the barest minimum, especially in games of this magnitude. Also, we also need big performances from our most experienced players like Bruno Rashford, Ericsson and the likes, you know. It makes it more difficult going to Porto away to go and get a result because they also lost earlier today. And it's, they'll be up for they'll be up for that game. So I really hope we find solutions sooner than later because Wasting too many chances doesn't help. It does also ha- doesn't also help the team's spirit. It doesn't help the team's morale. So I hope we can be finishing our chances sooner and get more comfortable in games to avoid silly, silly situations like this. Thank you. Well, we are back again. <laughs> uh, plus one, minus one, Christian Eriksen. <laughs> Provides a goal, dashes the goal. <laughs> Oh, oh Man United, the gift that keeps on giving. That's why we say it. <laughs> You've, we, we've set the tone for another, another season. Another roller coaster another season. Roller yeah, another roller coaster season. Oh God, when is this all going to end? When, when, mm. when, when <laughs> is it going to end? Eventually. 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 For the vanishes. <laughs> Charlie, that's how oh, I introduce you to another excited. I don't know whether it's excited, but where have you take you it? You call this exciting, Kwame. How about you take it? <laughs> another edition of United and Everything Football Podcast. My name is Kwame. I'm here with Kwame, and we are joined by Yao Primpong once again um, on the podcast. We are here to discuss the game between United and FC20. Um, this job, the way it's hard, eh? You still have to come here to come and record, no matter how you are feeling. <laughs> and please, we are doing this with you. Remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Please smash the likes for us. Leave your comments. Mm-hmm. Pour your frustration down there. Pour it, pour it down there. Let us know what you think, what you made of the game, and um, what's your what's your general impression of events that has happened. So as usual, let me make a quick turn around. When I come back, I'll ask my guys what really happened. Major talking point, we'll pick it up, we'll bring it apart, and then we'll try and discuss everything with you here on United and Everything Football. All right, thank you very much. Welcome back from the break. And so let's get straight into action. Let me start with you, Yao. Off before off record before we came on, you were like there were positives. I want to hear your positives. <laughs> po- po- positives in the sense that United are creating chances. Uh-huh. That piece coach yeah. looks to be working something over there, and mm. then um, you can tell there's a positive um, effect on the on the squad having a proper central midfielder mm. as well as um, the quality of Masrari. Mm. But beyond that. Yeah, too many issues with too the structure. Yeah. Structure and build up, structure and attack and structure defensively. And a lot of work has to be done uh, for Eric and Hyde. A lot of work has to be done. Kwame, let me get to you. What was going through your mind? The end is near. 
<laughs> you fear for the coach, eh? <laughs> let me let me tell you why. Because a couple of podcasts ago, I told you before the international break, I told yes. you we have a run of fixtures that we have yeah. to make the most of. Mm-hmm. Right? I yeah. felt on paper those fixtures were easy and we could use it as a building block for yeah. the storm that is coming. Yes. Guess what? The storm is here. Yes. And we didn't build on it. We didn't mm-hmm. make good use of those fixtures. Yes. We bottled it. We bottled the fixtures we're supposed to use to gain some let, confidence. Let, let, let me share the, the storm. Ball. Let me share the storm. So on the screen, <laughs> United <laughs> Space, United Villa, United mm. Brentford. West Ham, I don't know whether they will pick form before that, but United <laughs> West Ham and then United Chelsea. That is the storm that Kwame is talking about. That's the storm. These are, are no we easy. ready for this? These are Do no you think easy. we are ready? We are even struggling oh, to yeah. beat FC20. <laughs> so, 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 it's not looking good, Kwame. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. But generally, let's talk about, yeah, let, let's break the game down. Let's break the game down. Um, we, we played very well. For most parts of the game, I mean, we could see us in control. Um, we didn't give away too many chances. It's one thing that really makes me happy that I'm watching United and we are not given too many chances. Um, Unana wasn't called into action for most parts of the game. The only time I'm sure he was called into action was twice. That's ball Dalu made a mistake with the back heel that the player, even that one, Unana didn't have to do much. And then the goal that Unana conceded. Beyond that, I don't see... I, I don't know if any of you remember anything that Unana had to do in the game. It was, it was a just match, one free kick in the second half. You had to parry away. Parry away, was, yes. It was going out anyway, I think. Exactly. Yeah. At best, hits the post and then flies flies away or something. So, generally, it's something that fills me. But, yeah, let's pick the game apart. What is the problem? Um, Man United are, are coming out of a season of being second best. Um, you, you'd see United at Old Trafford not dominating games. We're seeing that United were dominant throughout the game. Um, there were faces where United really just needed the ball to end end up in the back of their net, and that's it. United win to win the game. But what what happened today really was we let ourselves down in terms of how we structure the team. Um, you look at how United tried to build with inverted fullbacks and Dalo not being a natural left-footed left-back. Um, when he gets into the middle, there's only one kind of pass he tries to play. He's going to go with his right foot and he can't go across the pitch or open up the pitch. He goes back into the channel where Rashford or Garnacho was running into. So it makes it very limited in terms of options and he can play a short pass. But then when he does join into the middle, you realize that 20 really, really set up mid, mid low block mm-hmm. just to focus on frustrating United in the middle. We saw United against Barnsley just touching off each other, trying to move the ball really, really quickly and they tried their best to make the space as compact as possible to prevent United from doing that. Xerxes couldn't get his flicks around. Bruno couldn't do that. When United tried to build it, there's always a white body in there to prevent that. And that meant United were a bit... Um, they struggled a bit in terms of building up. Yeah. The good part of that was Diallo should have stayed on the whole game. Yeah. He was the bright spark for United. Himself and Rashford actually showed that. Yeah they're actually doing something special as the wingers um, for United. It's just that down the middle, Ericsson, Ugarte, Bruno Fernandes, and Zerxi, there has to be some communication in there. There were a lot of times where United trying to play those cute passes in the middle, ball is intercepted, and 20 just spring into counter-attack, and they go right through our midfielders and defenders, went through Lissandro Martinez, Maguire, and then the last or final ball wouldn't really go where it's supposed to because Masrari or another defender would be reading that pass. But it showed that United still has that issue of our central midfielders don't understand what they're doing. Um, Ericsson, brilliant in moving the ball forward, trying to dictate the tempo of the game. However, himself and Niguati tend 
So they were focusing on one side of the pitch. Mm. You can have two central midfielders not balanced in the middle, where one's on the left, one's on the right. But it turned out to be more of one's, <laughs> they're both on the left. Mm. And then when there is an overload, and you realize 20 saw that. So they tried to create overloads where they know all our players are and they have so much space when they move the ball back to the other side because now Ugati has to go across mm. or Diallo has to come and drop in or Majorari has to step up. Mm. And you find that they, they found ways to just draw Martinez out of position mm. because he was key for United's build-up. So once he, once he gets involved in the action, then they try to intercept because then they know United are short at the back. And mm. with those problems, you'll find that it will make it easy for the opponent to, to penetrate through the middle. Going forward, Xerxes, brilliant player. He, I think he had one brilliant shot. Um, yeah. Keeper saved it. But beyond that, United needed a striker and they needed someone that could hold up play. With Xerxes on, you need Bruno to be making certain runs. You need Rashford to be making certain runs. Ahmad as well. And the point is he's supposed to flick the ball off. Mm. Flick it as much as possible and create runs or opportunities down the channel. And mm. United didn't get that. And so it, it's quite clear that going forward, United still has some work to do. Structurally, there's so much work. It, it was a messy game after United conceded mm. because now everybody was just trying to play. And that was the problem United... Well, it's the problem United have had for a couple of years now because everything was going through Bruno Fernandes. Once United concede, all discipline goes away and everyone's just trying to chase the ball. Mm. And that isn't the way to play if you're trying to win a title or challenge for a trophy this year. So those are some of the issues I saw. That's a very brilliant breakdown, brilliant analysis from Yao, trying to make us appreciate exactly how things happen. I mean, as he speaks, I picture the game and I see exactly how it played out and all of that. Akwame, another game, another underperformance of our XG. <laughs> Let me check the XG. <laughs> the XG was... <laughs> the XG was one point... Oh. It was one point... I don't, two, I, I don't, th I don't think this was... No, I don't think we underperformed our XG. We didn't create enough... Yeah, but we didn't enough. create enough... Yeah. Like, That's not so... It's, it's, it's a... It's a totally different situation. <laughs> what happened to that's just to top up on what Yao is Yao saying. Did, yeah. I'm I'm looking at the game in two parts. Okay. What what before the goal and after the goal? Because those were two different games. Yeah. Before the goal, the major issue we had was with urgency. Mm. I think we felt it was too easy. That's how I see it. Mm. I don't think we, we struggled during that point. We it was we literally just coasting, and that's the issue. You don't coast, mm -hmm. you put the game away. But we're playing as if no matter what's going to happen, a chance is going to come and it will kill off the game. Mm. The urgency wasn't there. That's mm. the problem. The urgency mm. wasn't there. And then the second part of the game was after we conceded. United has a problem dealing with adversity. Mm. Once we concede, like Yao said, discipline completely goes out of the window. And like led, the Palace game... Led by the captain. Like, I was getting yeah. to that. Like the Palace mm. game, when we need people to step up. That's when Bruno Fernandes actually loses the plot. <laughs> it, it's, it's almost like as if we are drumming in on Bruno Fernandes, but the way he's playing this season, it's absolutely shocking. Yeah. It's shocking. Like, it's shocking. Yeah. Then, in trying to fix the problem or trying to, you know, score a goal that will put the, probably put us back in the lead, Eric Ten Hag makes these changes. And you ask yourself, <laughs> are they the right subs? Are they making a positive impact on the game? Obviously, over the last two games, the, the substitutions have not impacted the game as it should. Mm -hmm. Personally, once again, I don't know why you took Marcus Rashford off. Because yep. I thought Marcus Rashford was having a very good game. Today. He was brilliant. And he took him off. Yeah. And he brought on Mason Mount in the 10 when I was expecting him to probably drop Zexi into the 10 and play Hoylo in front of him since we were chasing a goal. You need two strikers exactly. on the football pitch. But then that did not happen. And so all momentum is simply lost. And we are just relying on, you know what, we are my United, we are playing at Old Trafford, and we are just throwing kitchen and sink at them some way, somehow, expecting something to happen. It almost yielded foot, though. At the end, I don't know how we did not put the ball at the back of the net after those couple of set pieces. 
but ultimately we've dropped points again. And the stats are quite damning. We have won only one of our last nine European fixtures. We are struggling in Europe. And when I talk about Europe, it's not even just like one competition. I'm talking about a combination of both Champions League football and Europa League football. We've, we've won just one game out of our line last nine matches. Terrible. If you look at our next two games, I think we're going to Porto and we're going to Porto, Turkey. Mm. We've just set ourselves up for a similar group phase as we did have last season, where it just becomes an ultimate struggle. You get it. Coupled with the fact that we have some incredibly tough league games, like I said at the very beginning, we are fucked. Excuse my French. We mm -hmm. are simply in deep, deep waters. Maybe it's not we. One man is simply <laughs> in deep, deep, deep waters at this moment in time. He has to dig himself out. But I'd give him one reprieve. Our players sometimes are a massive let's down. What was Christian Eriksen doing? Like, what was he doing at that point in time? Like, how do you explain that brain fat moment? How do you... Where this player goes to a couple of players who got to fix the problem, we get the ball, and you completely lose track of the moment, the area you are on the football pitch, what it entails, and give the ball away when there is nothing in the game. It was a nothing game. 20 were offering absolutely no threat. Let's not no try threat. and make it look like... No threats. So there I was said no threat. There was nothing. We were just defending for their lives, waiting like lambs to the slaughter. And we're not prepared to slaughter. If you give your, if you leave your opponents with an opportunity to get back into the game, this is exactly what happens. But our players, our players should be more responsive. See, this this Okumfu Dofu kind of behavior, it's unacceptable. I mean, how do you score such a brilliant goal to put us up? People allow praising you for the last three games, and all of a sudden, right? All of a sudden, you do that in a high stakes game like this to put your team on the back foot. It's just unacceptable. I, I question the mentality of these players all the time. It's not, I don't think it's an issue necessarily of quality. It's a mental issue now. Some players are past it. Mm -hmm. Those who are not past it and are supposed to be at it are not always at it. And then there's a certain crop of players who are simply inexperienced and can't produce the goods all the time. That's the constitution of our squad, basically. It's, uh, it's what it is. Is this is what see, this is what, this is what I, I keep saying that as for the coach, I'll meet him in May. Like I keep telling you. If you'll be there to meet if, if you if, if you only will be there. Because still be there. <laughs> you see, there is this point where they would have this run. Win, 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 mm -hmm. win, win. They will have this slump. Draw, draw lose, win. draw, win, lose. Some a period of ink. And and that is that is what worries me. It worries me a lot. And you see, well, please, I'm not, I'm not coming after the coach. But if you are talking about mentality, one man transmits it, one man mm. sets it, one man makes sure that things are at that level. And I'll still the buck stops with the man because they will be coming for his head. Whoever is, yeah, in, also whoever, whoever is in charge of the football division will be coming for the head of the coach. So it's very important that he gets a spot on because, like you said. Some of the substitutions, Eric Ten Hag has been quite good with some of the substitutions this season. I mean, bringing on Ganacho to, and, and I felt it was pre-planned. He was like, at 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 whatever, wherever the game is, let me bring on Ganacho, or let me take off Ahmad, or let me take off Rashford, so that, bro, 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 sometimes read, read, you are a coach, read the game, before the game um, Steve McLaren was talking about Ten Hag's brilliance on reading games and being, bro. Are you listening to me? Like, like he the, read the said, game before. Oh, are you hearing me, <laughs> Ten Hag? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Like Rashford was having a good game. Uh. You know the guy. Like, you see, why do you? Because you look even between Rashford and Bruno Fernandez on a day, who was having a bad, who was having a good game, Rashford. So why do you take him out? I would be throughout the game. If 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 you remember, I kept saying that on on a mutual platform. I'm with I'm on you with the only dangerous players we had on the pitch was Ahmad and Rash. They were the only, and that's why I was so happy with the analysis he did because anyone who watched that game carefully would see the danger these two were posing to the opponent. 
and they were interchanging. Ahmad was working hard at some point, getting himself so back, tracking back. Was, was, yeah, Rashford was starting the defending from the front, was winning balls from the front, shouldering players. Winning do, do, you know what's, do, do you know what's ironic about this whole Rashford thing? When he was out of form, yeah, he was playing. He kept, he kept him on for ninety minutes almost all the time. Yes. When, when it's clear, it's quite clear that he's found his form back. See, this guy was doing the what's that Ronaldo Ronaldinho trick in the first. He did half. the snake bite. He did the, the snake, snake bite. bite. See, the moment he did that snake bite, I said to myself, "Yeah, we have our boy back. Like he's back." Huh. How come now that he's for, he's got his form back? That's when you seem to either not start him in games. Or take him off in games. What what what's happening? What kind of man management? It's 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 been terrible. Yeah. See, this one. <laughs> okay, this one. Oh, oh, if you want to get to yeah, you can get to yeah. But yeah, yeah. Has, yeah, has something on his chest. Uh, it looks like I've been. Oh, let's let's let it out. Let's oh, no. let him rip. <laughs> oh, no. oh no no! You know, with Ericsson, when you play him as a number six, yeah. we've seen it over and over and over and over again. Teams just target him because he's not the strongest um, midfielder. Yeah. So all you need to do, similar to what um, Liverpool did against Kobe Manu, yeah. just wait for him to get the ball and then you push him off the ball. That's it. Because he believes in his ability on the ball, technical ability, but yeah. mm. he can't have all the awareness in the world. So once he gets it, we rush him and he always does it just in front of his box. He makes it so easy. I remember, was it Brentford? Yeah, Brentford. Yeah, Brentford, yes, the 4 0. Yeah, that that's that is all I'll say. That that's exactly <laughs> all that I could see. They did a Brentford in that moment, to be honest. Exactly. How, and, how 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 do you lose the ball? How do you lose your? I can't sense explain. Of I can't explain how how he lost the ball. Then. I how can't do explain do that him. because and like, even mm -hmm. even even as a DM, he had two simple options: give it back to Ugarte or give it to. The Onana. Onana. Onana was there. Onana. Play it back to Just him. Pass it to Onana. <laughs> Play it back to him. And he, and he would give you the time to reorganize your midfield. Reset. And then and pass it to you. As simple as that. However, he decided to just give a goal. Maybe he's a double agent. Anyway, we were here discussing that we have to win all our games. The way we're talking plenty. Oh, Charlie, the the, the, the pre-game. Pre like, win all the games. We have two very difficult away games to go play against FC Porto and also Fenerbahce in Turkey. And you know Jose Moreno. Knowing how very mentally weak some of our players are, is going to hunt us. Oh, he's going to pray on that. Oh, to pray yes. On that. He'll pray on that. He'll do a lot of... And he knows the club. He knows He knows most of the players in there. Let's just pray Luke Shaw is not back at that time. Oh, of course. Then you target him. He will have, target have a go at him. He will target him. And that's how he's going to go. Kwame. You, you, you are mentioning Luke Shaw. You should even pray that boy plays for the club again. <laughs> he's nowhere to be found at current. <laughs> the club. <laughs> so, so, so Malasha is back and now he's gone. <laughs> Can you imagine? He's lost. We can't find him. The, thing, the interesting thing about Luke Shaw is that the last time he played for United was the game against Luton Town in February. February. March. I, I still went to Euros. <laughs> May. The season ends. And when he goes to the Euros, plays in the final, comes back for preseason. He's hit. August, September. He will come back in October. And even that one, we are not too sure. <laughs> that one, you're not even sure. <laughs> Alex, no we need we need anyway, a anyway breaking news Kwame. breaking yes. news we've we've drawn against Leicester in the Carabao Cup at home in the next mm. round Ooh, and I, I think the big fixture here Ooh, so, hey you are saying this with confidence now yes, I don't yes. have confidence in anything anyway <laughs> the big the big draw there is Tottenham Hotspurs at home against Man City that's, that's Ooh, it was Tottenham should say bye bye I win things in my second. <laughs> I win things in my second season. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's the quick updates on the Carabao Cup. We played against Leicester, and uh, we'll be here to talk about that game. And we, mm. Ericsson had to pray; he still has a job by that time. By it's then, good, good point. <laughs> good point. You know, See, honestly, anyway. I think he's in trouble. I think he's in trouble, man. Yeah. I really do think he's in trouble. Yeah, I, 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 I kept saying it. Yeah, I'm listening. I looked at the fixtures. I looked at the fixtures. And you know, I broke it down. Like, you know what? Get these five games out of the way with some points, with some 
wins yeah. and some goals. Otherwise, the storm that's coming, I don't know how he survives the storm. You know why? I really liken this situation to managers in the past. Mm -hmm. There was a sequence of games that Jose Mourinho was supposed to get through, and he was struggling. And then there was a storm just coming right after that. He didn't survive that storm. By the Liverpool, he was gone. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing happened to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer when he started the season off to mixed results. And then I said to myself, there was this sequence of games that are coming. Yeah. It will probably be the end of him. Hmm. Right? Yeah, and he did not survive that storm by Watford. Even Watford was at the end of that sequence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got we got a 4 1 dropping us. But yes. then the team had lost confidence completely. Do you have yeah. Yeah. So this is my yeah. problem. Yeah. If you are, haven't been able to bag these points, get your team scoring goals and believing in what you are doing. Because that's the thing, like I said in our previous recording, they will get to believe in what you are doing if the results come. Positive reinforcement, yeah. as they call it. Yeah. But if there is no reinforcement in, in results, right, what's going to happen is you play against Spurs and you lose, right? Soon, these boys will go like, oh my God, what we are trying is mm -hmm. not working. Mm -hmm. Confidence goes down, the goals mm -hmm. are not going in. Players with down tools, and by the end of the top sequence of fixtures, mm. you're done. Mm -hmm. Even if you play Leicester City at the end of that sequence at home, you probably mm. end up losing. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Because by then, all confidence is gone from the team, and you've lost the dressing room basically, and that's just the end of it. I don't think Indians are going to hang around and let the season go. Oh, no, 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 no. So yeah, if, if, if he's going to survive miraculously, he has to rather turn our difficult fixtures around and win those ones. I don't see him doing it, honestly. Personally, I don't. That's a tough I'm, I'm one. There. I'm there now. Like, I, I, I don't <laughs> think you survive. Because see, we've lived... The, see, it's deja vu, Kwame. It's deja vu. It's like we're living in a circle. And we can't seem to... It's a cycle, actually. We can't break, seem to break, break that, that cycle. cycle. We can't break yeah. it. We are just stuck in the loop, going around in circles, and nothing seems to be changing. Nobody yeah. seems to be able to, you know, break the cycle and free us. So we are basically going to end up starting all over again anyway. Yeah. Oh, Kwame, Kwame, no, Kwame, Kwame, Kwame is lost. Are you also lost? <laughs> Kwame just when he was talking, all I had in my head was mental slavery, but Bali is here. <laughs> but look, look, United United cycle really I always say that say Alex did us a bit massive disservice, but also did United a lot of good by leaving when he did. Fix it, get it done, and then we had Mr. Woodward for a couple of years, so we never got it right. Mm -hmm. But now we've got people that actually understand football and want to get things right on the pitch. Yeah. So it's quite important that United get it right, and there are many structures in place that I think should benefit the the, the head coach at the moment. However, he's failing to see it, mm -hmm. and it's important for him to realize that. Look, you've got this. Beautiful runner games. Mm. It started with Palace. Mm. And your only your only way out is string a couple of good results. Get a good run going. Yeah. All mm. your home home matches, non-negotiable. Yep. Win all those matches. Mm. The performances, I wouldn't lie, they are much better than last season. Yeah. When mm -hmm. when when it's nil-nil or we're leading by a goal, we're playing beautiful football. Yep. Once we are down by a goal. Or it's a draw, and we're trying to get another goal. Then we go back to the. I don't know if it's positive reinforcement that has mm. worked over there, but mm. we're stuck in our ways, mm. and we need to break that cycle. Yeah. And I think it's on the manager to to really do something about that. And it starts with getting results. Mm. the The football is looking great; it's looking better than last year. But we need results to back them, and that's what will bring the confidence. Yeah. And when there's confidence, you can play Spurs, go play Villa, Chelsea. You would sort it out. So it's 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 quite important that United, the the cycle of draws and losses, it has to change. It has to, it can't be acceptable at Old Trafford more so. So we've played how many games so far? I've played about seven games in total. We've won three. We've lost two, and then we have drawn two. Uh, the last. Two, Charlie. Yeah. That's that's the do you know, do you know do you know do you know the percentage? If, if you are to, 
I mean, you've lost, you, you've won less than half your game. So you're yes. talking about less than 50%. Probably yes. something yes. like 46 points, something. 42.8. Exactly. 48. Win rate. That's what you're talking about this season. Yes. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. You see, you know, one thing that really pisses me off. Today is just a conversation. I will have a new person. Go ahead and piss this video. Bruno Fernandez. Every oh, we come back to Bruno. And we want to win trophies. These players, oh, and we want to win trophies. This club is all about trophies. And we want to do this. And we are that. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable of the standard of the club. And But you get to the pitch and you're playing uh, like that. That's not even the worst part about Bruno. Let me tell you the worst part about <laughs> When you need him the most, I'm talking about Eric, and not, not even the fans, not us. When a coach needs him the most, he turns <laughs> off just like everybody else, right? Yeah. But on the brink of the coach's sack, <laughs> right? Then he turns up all of a sudden, you know, like the end of last season, the end of Ole's time. It was the same yeah. thing. Then he turns up and he's the only one, you know, scoring a goal. Of and then everybody, everybody forget about the <laughs> fact that... <laughs> <laughs> you are the reason you play, so you played, yeah. <laughs> you played. See, he won player of the year last season, yeah. And I was slightly disappointed in him winning it. He won it at the back of was, <laughs> he won at the back of the back end of the season. Well, April, Dalo May, was he has scored like eight, consistent eight, the whole eight, season. Consistent almost the whole season. For the first couple of months, Dalo was all over the place. Champions League all over, blah, blah, blah. But that was for the entire season. But from that period from November all the way to the very end of the season. Yogo Dalo was Stop consistent. Yeah. Hey, Bruno Fernandes was lost for most part of the season. And the last two or three months when he Eric Ten Hag was on the ropes, <laughs> literally on the ropes and dying. <laughs> and empty calories. I call it em empty calories. That's what Bruno Fernandes was doing. Yeah. Those goals were not even fetching us points. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. It was just empty calories, right? Yeah. He was just like getting the, his usual stats in. Yeah. But mm -hmm. one thing I gave him massive, massive credit for was just before the final, he came out on was it what's it? Was it no. Yeah, 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 yeah. The players tribune. Yeah. Pl players tribune and put out the most unbelievable statement. Like I said, you know, he's a good talker. Yeah. He, he knows how to talk. Yeah. Unbelievable statement. And he backed it up in that one game. Yeah, final. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So ultimately when he went one player of the other, I was like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you, you can have that one, you can have that one, but yeah. people don't remember the truth, the whole yeah. story. It's the same thing that he's doing. Watch this, watch this. We achieved absolute shit right now, right? Mm -hmm. Results may not necessarily get better, yeah. but on the brink, right? Bruno Fernandes is scoring against Chelsea. He is scoring against uh, Fenerbahce. When, 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 when we start hearing Eric has two or three games to save the season, uh -huh, uh -huh, <laughs> and uh -huh. then he saves the season for him. <laughs> then, then he saves the season. It's either he saves the season for him, or he 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 helps him to the very end. And when finally the last dagger is stuck in on Eric, he comes out and goes like, we should applaud the manager, we should show support, Everybody, fans to clap. We are all manager. together. It's all of us together. All together. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh God, this bless will be the end of us. Charlie. So Charlie, guys, yeah, your last words. Then let's, 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 let's run. Um, I, I think Man United have, have shown that there are good performances in there. When you do this at home on an European night, certainly the fans will be filled with confidence. Yeah. But when you can't get the defensive structure or out of possession structure right, you will continue to, to struggle. Mm. Eric Ten Hag needs to really work on how he's going to pair Bugatti, who he's going to pair him with in terms of the number eight or number six he's going to play with or the number 10 as well and settle on his preferred forward line. It seems... With every game, we're changing something about our forward line. And as much as rotation is necessary for the for the club, too much rotation wouldn't get us where we need to be. So he needs to be a bit more consistent. And reward players that are picking form. Do not just play someone for 60 minutes and, okay, I said I'll play 60 minutes. You're scoring 10 goals. No, 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 but I still need you to come off. No. Rashford, Ahmad Diallo, they, they are showing signs that they are red hot. Yeah. Give them the playing time. That's what will bring out all the juices that they have. Yeah. And then you will benefit. And United need, need to work on that inversion mm -hmm. that they've been doing. Inverted fullbacks. 
he needs to figure it out because Dalo leaving and <laughs> Dalo went into to the middle and Ericsson was playing left back at some point. <laughs> we saw Ericsson when the ball was taken off him in the middle. He yeah. can't run. Yeah. So him as your left back, makeshift left back, already is a problem. Mm-hmm. So United need to really work that out. Maybe Kobe Manu should be, well, I asked for him to be rested, mm-hmm. but it looks like they need another option. Mm-hmm. Just someone who's got the legs so that Dalo can be a bit more effective when he, dro- he drops in there. But all in all, United 1-1 on the first night. Let's just hope they can right the wrong when they go away um, to Porto next time. To Porto? To Porto? <laughs> Cristiano did it. Ale- Alejandro <laughs> Ganacho can do it. Eric Ten Hag away from home, God, big man. games. Ah, Mami, one minute. Young Cop. Uh, Eric Ten Hag is on his own now. He's a- <laughs> I've raised my hand, he's on his own. See, 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 it's deja vu. I've said this already, it's deja vu. I've lived this moment too many times over the past 11 years. And I tell you, Kwame, we are back here again. Yeah. We've gone full circle and we are right back where we started. Yeah. The end is near. Yeah. I see. I don't see how he survives the next yeah. couple of months. That the game, the game might eventually be right by November. <laughs> Au revoir, tschüss, <laughs> bon voyage, see you next time, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> on that note, we see you on the next one. Have a great time. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you very much, Kwame. Thank you very much, Yao. We'll see you again before the Spurs game. Yeah, we'll see you again before the Spurs game. I'm um, on the same channel here on United and everything. Have a great time. See you on the next one. Bye bye.